Hey, my name is Josh Garrick. I'm um, going over topics for Chem 1310 today, talking about specifically the wave nature of light and um, different important equations and relationships that you want to know to be successful when we're, you're talking about this kind of stuff in this class. So first, let's go over the basics, really. Um, up here we have what a light wave actually looks like. Um, the wavelength and the amplitude and different components of a um, the different components of a light wave. So the wavelength signified by um, this Greek letter of the alphabet is the distance between corresponding points on adjacent waves. The amplitude is the size or height of the wave. The frequency is the number of complete waves per second signified by this V. Um, it's measured in hertz, and our hertz is one per second. Um, two constants that'll come in handy and are useful to know are Planck's constant, which is H, and it is equal to 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And one joule is just a little note is equal to one kilogram per meter squared second squared. And the speed of light in a vacuum um, signified by C is also a constant and it's equal to three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Some of the important relationships and equations here are the speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. Um, energy of a photon equals Planck's constant times the frequency which can also be derived as the energy of a photon equals Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by wavelength. And then the mass of a photon is just something else that um, can be useful at different times, equals the energy of a photon over the speed of light squared. Um, can also be derived in those two different ways as well. Uh, it's just an extra equation not mentioned in the book that can come in handy in uh, random situations. So now we have two practice problems using um, the important relationships of wave uh, light waves. Um, for this first one, over on this side, we have uh, brilliant red color seen in fireworks displays is due to strontium emissions at a frequency of 4.62 times 10 to the net fourth. Uh, calculate the wavelength of light. So as we said before, um, the speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. So rearrange that. We have wavelength equals the speed of light divided by frequency. So the speed of light is a constant and frequency was given. So we calculated that out to be 6.49 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, which is also 649 Newton meters which is sometimes what wavelength is measured in. And over here on this side, we have another example problem. The laser in a standard printer emits light with a wavelength of 780 Newton meters. Uh, part A is what is the energy of a photon of light, and part B is what is the frequency of light emitted by that laser. So 780 Newton meters, um, we want to convert that to meters so we can actually work with it. So one meter uh, is one times 10 to the ninth Newton meters. So it's going to be 7.8 times 10 to the negative 7 meters um, from 780 Newton meters. So energy of a photon, we said, was going to be Planck's constant times the speed of light over wavelength. We have, um, over here we have Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength that was given. That's going to come out to be 2.55 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Um, that's part A. Uh, and then for part B, we, we know that frequency equals the speed of light over wave, wavelength. So we have speed of light is constant and the wavelength that, or yeah, the wavelength converted to meters is here. We divide those two and we get 3.85 times 10 to the negative 14th seconds. Um, and that's B, or hertz, sorry. But that's just two... Um, examples that really show that you can really do with these important equations and relationships um, that are from the wave na nature of light and uh, different 
light waves and what you can do with them. So I hope that helps out a little bit. Have a good one.